Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's a bright, sunny day here in Newport, Oregon, and I'm down in uh, Yakina Bay. Yakina, Yakina. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I've been wanting to come down here and walk the piers, um, take pictures of the, the boats and the fishing vessels, and I thought I'd bring you guys along and talk to you a little bit about aperture along the way. All right, let's go see what we can see. So I just heard from a local fisherman, it's Yaquina, Yaquina Bay. I'm gonna try and keep that, keep that in mind. All right, so before we go exploring around, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the reason I brought you guys down here, other than just walk around with me and see all the cool boats and, and, and whatnot, see what pictures we can get. So I wanted to talk to you about uh, aperture and what it does for you and why you wanna be able to control your aperture. And so what you wanna do first on your camera is set your, the dial on top of your camera uh, to A or some cameras like Canon's AV, which stands for aperture value, it's the same thing. So what aperture is, um, it's defined in, in F numbers, in F stops. And I think what, what's confusing to a lot of people is a small aperture number like 1.4, if you start looking inside your lens, that's a very large hole in your lens. The aperture is open wide open at 1.4 or, or you know, very, very close to wide open. F1 is actually, I think you can even get a little bit below F1. But anyway, F1.4 is a very large opening in your camera. It's allowing a lot of light in. And then F22, a large F number, is actually a very small hole inside the camera lens. It's only allowing a certain amount of light in. So I think that's where a lot of confusion is. And I think what the, I think why it is, is because F, if you start thinking as F as a fraction, the, it's always, you know, F1.4 is F over 1.4. It's, it's a fraction. The F is the numerator and the 1.4 is the denominator. So if you, you know, the, the F is always would be 1. So 1 over 1 is the complete circle. It's a very large hole. And so F over 1.4 is a little bit littler. And then F over 22, which is 1 over 22, is a very small hole. It's a... Uh, um, it's a very small part of the of the fraction. So it, it works. And what aperture is doing? It works the same way as the pupil of your eye. Um, if you go into a very bright environment, your the pupil of your eye uh, constricts and gets smaller. And then if you go into a darker environment, it dilates and gets larger. Okay. So your pupil at a, in a very bright environment would be f22, and then your pupil in a dark environment would be f1.4. And what that is doing in your eye is it's regulating the amount of light particles that actually can hit the pupil of your eye to enter your eye. So if you're in a very bright environment, your pupil doesn't, you don't need as much light to sense your environment and see what's going on around you. So your, your pupil constricts and only allows a certain amount of light particles to hit your eye. If you go into a dark environment, um, it dilates and gets larger because it needs a lot of light particles to hit the surface of your pupil to enter your eye so you can start to perceive and get your night vision so to speak and see what's going on. The, your camera's aperture works the exact same way. What's cool about the aperture on a, on a camera and what it controls mainly, and the reason you as an artist or a photographer would want to manipulate your aperture, is it gives you what's known as depth of field. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll, if I were to take a picture at f22, it's a very uh, constricted pupil. What that does is it actually, you need more light in the environment to go to f22 because remember it's a very constricted pupil and so it's saying there's a lot of light in the environment. So, but if I were to take a picture of these, these boats here, this 13, 10, 3, and 4, if I, I, I've got my camera on aperture priority, if I were to set it up all the way, this, this lens right here actually is a, goes from 1.4 
f1.4 to f16. So if I set this up to f16, it's a small hole, but what it does when I take a picture is everything is in focus. The foreground, the midground, and the background. Everything is in focus in this picture. And I'll take this picture here real quick. Okay? And you can see everything from the boat number 13 all the way to the boat 4 and even the building in the background and the trees in the background and the sky, everything is in focus. What's cool about aperture is what's known as depth of field. Now if I dial my aperture down to its lowest setting, which is 1.4, which remember is a very large aperture. The, the, the hole inside this camera is very large. It brings a depth of field to the photograph, and what that depth of field kind of is, is like a sheet of paper. And it's saying that if I make that sheet of paper go to this 13 boat, this number 13 is going to be in focus and everything in the foreground before that 13 and everything after in the background is going to be out of focus and give it what's known as a bouquet. Um, very powerful in photography, very powerful in, in portraiture. You can actually bring my, my face in focus and everything in the background is, is blurred out. And so what I'll do is I've got my camera set to 1.4. What I like doing when I'm doing this type of photography is I don't like the camera searching and telling me what I want to be in focus. I set my camera to center focus to where I focus on the 13, boat 13, and then I recompose. I, I've got it focused here at 13. I've got my finger halfway depressed on the shutter button so the focus doesn't change. So I focus on the 13, then I recompose my shot, and I take that picture. You'll see that the 13 boat is completely in focus, and everything in the background and anything in the foreground, if there were anything, would, would be out of focus, that bouquet. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, number 10 boat. I'm going to focus on the number 10, I'm going to recompose, and I'm going to take that shot. Okay? Now you'll see that the 10 is in focus, and the number 13 is a little bit out of focus, and everything beyond in the background of the 10 is, once again, also out of focus. So now I'm going to go back to the uh, number 3 and 4 boat back there, focus on those, hold my shutter button halfway down to keep that focus, recompose, and take that picture. Okay. Now you see that everything in the foreground is out of focus until you get to that number three or four, four boat back there. So, yeah, I hope that explains it. I hope you, I hope you have got some, you know, helpful information from that. So let's go wander around and uh, take some pictures of some cool boats, and I'll be using the, uh, I'll be using aperture value on my camera, kind of give you an idea of what, what this can do. Pretty cool. This boat right here is actually pretty cool. So what I want to get here is uh, I want to focus on the, the rope and the sockeye and have everything in the background a little bit out of focus. So once again, I'm at f1.4, focusing in on the name Taking that picture, that's a really cool picture. What a crazy life this would be, you know? Working off these fishing boats. Pretty tough breed if you ask me. Well, now what I want to do is I want to sit up here and get a picture once again of these crab pots with the dock blurred out in the background, give it that nice bouquet. I hope this is all working out, because if it's not, this is going to be a real short video. <laughs>
right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here, I think. Um, hopefully you got a little bit of uh, knowledge from this video. You know, aperture is a pretty big subject. Um, uh, anyway, just, you know, get out there and practice with your camera. Put it in aperture priority and get out there and, and, and you know, practice with that depth of field. It's a really, well, all parts of photography are fun. You know, the more you learn, the better the better it gets. I know with me, it took me a long time to get a grasp on aperture. So if there's anything you can, anything you can collect out there, the better learn about it you know so I'm definitely going to come back to the docks here I really enjoy being here I really it's it's peaceful it's relaxing I, I really enjoy watching the fishermen run around doing their doing their thing you know this is their this is a day at work for them you know and I enjoy it so if you like this video please give it the, the thumbs up it really helped me out a lot um, if you like what I'm putting out there go ahead and subscribe to my channel it would really help me out a lot once again I'm a pretty small channel so even go so far as hitting that notification bell if you want to get notified next time I come out with one so you can watch it just, just immediately, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for coming along with me on my journey, and until next time, ciao for now.